Wednesday, February 29th, midday, no food. We're still putting a shopping list in the lift every night, but when the lift comes down in the morning, the list is gone and there's no food, no nothing, just an empty lift. There's still a few bits and pieces of food left in the fridge, so we're not starving yet. Just hungry and cold. The heat's still off and it's absolutely freezing down here. The walls are filmed with ice. Bird's not looking too good. His neck's gone red and he's got a fever. He spent the last two days lying in bed, moaning and groaning all the time. Mind you, that's what he does most of the time anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. A disturbing moment. I came across Russell in the corridor this morning. He was just standing there, staring at the wall. Mr. Lansing? I said. Russell? He turned and looked at me. Hello there. What are you doing? He smiled. Interview. What? They want to see me about something. He winked. Disciplinary procedure. I didn't know what to say. I left him there, looking at the wall. Jenny's got a bad cold. At least, I hope it's just a cold. Her eyes are all runny, and she keeps coughing all the time. Apart from all that, though, everything is just fine. Late evening. Quiet. White. Cold. Dead. I put a note in the lift tonight asking for antibiotics and something for Jenny's cold. I know it's a waste of time, but I can afford it. I've got all the time in the world. I mean, we might not have any food or heat in here, but the one thing he can't take away from us is time. He can mess around with our perception of it, or at least he could before I smashed up the clock, but he can't deny us time. We've got plenty of that. Plenty of time. I've been thinking about it. Time. Tick tock. First thing. I've just realized what day it is. 29th of February. I think it's the 29th anyway. I think this year is a leap year. I can never remember how you're supposed to work it out. Not that it matters. But if I'm right, I've been here a month. Actually, it's 32 days. I've just worked it out. 32 days, 768 hours, 46,080 minutes. 2,764,800 seconds. Give or take a day or two. Or three. It's all relative, of course. Say I've been here a month. I'm 16 years and four months old, give or take a few days. Which is 196 months. So a month to me is 1 196th of my life. But Russell, well, let's say he's 70. 70 years is 840 months. So he's been here for 184th of his life. And Jenny, in her terms, has been here longer than both of us. I don't know exactly how old she is. I know she's 9, but I don't know when she's 10. But if we say for the sake of simplicity that she's 10, that means she's been here for almost 1 120th of her life. See? A month means different things to different people. That's what I mean by time being relative. Time. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I've thought about it so much, I've thought myself into a dead end. And another thing. It's hard. Hold on, let me get this straight. Right, it goes something like this. You've got the past, the present, and the future, okay? Time-wise, that's all you've got. Then, now, and when. The past is gone. You can't exist in the past, can you? It's gone. You can remember it, but you can't exist in it. And you can't exist in the future either, can you? It hasn't happened yet, so that leaves the present. Now, but if you think about it, if you ask yourself what the present actually is, when it is, I mean, how long is the present? How long is now? This moment, right now, the moment you exist in, how long does it take? A second? Half a second? A quarter of a second? An eighth of a second? You can go on having it forever, again and again and again. You can take it down to an infinitely small period of time, a squillionth of a nanosecond, and then you can still have it again. How can you exist in such an immeasurably small period of time? You can't, can you? It's too small to experience. It's gone before you know it. But if you can't exist now, and you can't exist in the future or the past, when the hell do you exist? Time. I want to see Russell about him. That's the kind of thing he knows about. Time and stuff. 
He was in a daze again. He thought I was someone called Fabian. I don't suppose it matters. Thursday, March 1st. We're completely out of food now. This morning, we shared out the last of the crackers. Two each. Yum, yum. There's nothing like a stale cracker to raise the spirits. Bird's up and about. His neck and half of his face have turned a weird shade of blue, and he's got these horrible, purply red blotches all over his skin. He's walking about, though, so he can't be that bad. I asked him how he was feeling, but he wouldn't even look at me. He tried to get an extra cracker. He said he was sick. He needed the extra energy. He wanted one of mine. Said it was my fault he was sick, so I should just give him one of my crackers. Fred told him to shut up. It's funny. Bird hates Fred. I don't think he hates him as much as he hates me, but it's pretty close. He thinks Fred's an idiot. Coarse, brutal, scummy. He thinks he's a lowlife. But now he owes him his life, and he's not sure how to deal with it. He doesn't know how to show gratitude. If it was me, I'd just say thanks. Thanks a lot for saving my life, and leave it at that. But Bird seems to think he owes Fred something more, like he's beholden to him or something. So he acts all subordinate, all cringy, but at the same time, he can't hide his contempt for him. It creeps into his smile, like a really bad smell. It's pathetic, really. I had a long chat with Russell this evening. I didn't mention the incident when he went a bit funny, but I think he knows about it. He looked a bit embarrassed, like a drunk who knows he's done something stupid, but can't remember what it was. Anyway... Russell told me all this stuff about when he was a kid. About his parents and school and what it was like growing up black and gay. He made it sound funny, but I think he had a pretty tough time. He got beaten up quite a lot. When the kids at boarding school first started picking on me, I thought it had something to do with dad being rich, that the other kids were just jealous. But soon I realized they had nothing to be jealous about. Their parents were all rolling in money too, huge amounts of money. And at least half of them had real celebrities for parents. Real A-list celebrities. Lords and ladies, minor royals, MPs, rock stars, film stars. That kind of thing. Compared to their parents, my dad was nothing. And then I started thinking that maybe that was why they picked on me. Because I was common, working class. I had no breeding. Or maybe they just didn't like my long hair, the way I speak. Or maybe they just didn't like me. That's possible, isn't it? Maybe I'm not very nice? I mean, you can't tell, can you? You can't tell if you're nice or not. You think you are, but everyone thinks they're nice. Everyone thinks they're all right. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. They picked on me. It doesn't matter why. They just did. Russell asked me what I'm going to do when I get out of here. If I'm going back home to dad. I don't know, I said. Probably. The street's all right for a while, but in the end it's no better than anywhere else. Same crappy people, same crappy life. Same old shit. At least dad doesn't steal my stuff. Do you miss him? Russell said. I don't know him enough to miss him. Russell looked at me. I sighed. Yeah, I miss him. Dad tried to find me when I first ran away. He had all these posters printed up. You know, the usual missing person kind of thing with my name and photograph and everything. He had them stuck up all over the place. I saw quite a few around London and railway and underground stations mostly. But Dad didn't actually know where I was, so he had the posters put up all over the country. I found out about it from this girl I met who'd come down from Northampton, Sophie. I met her one day hanging around outside McDonald's at Liverpool Street. She was dressed in a threadbare skirt, thin black tights, and bright red monkey boots. She was kind of nice. Anyway, we got talking, and she said she recognized me from the poster she'd seen in Northampton. After that, I cut my hair short and dyed it blonde. Dad hired a private detective, too. A dirty little man in a cheap suit. He started sniffing around, asking questions, showing people my photograph. But he didn't last long. Pretty Bob tracked him down and beat him up. I don't think he did it for my sake. He just likes beating people up. See? Same crappy people. I've had enough of this. Sunday, March 4th. Haven't managed to write for a while. Can't think of anything to say. I'm hungry. It's cold. I'm bored. Scared. Fed up. Same old stuff. God, I'm so fed up. 
It gets to the point when you can't do anything. You can't think anymore. You can't remember anything. You just don't feel anything. You can't even get angry anymore. You just lie on your bed all day, staring into space. Then the lights go out and you stare at the darkness. Light comes on, the empty lift comes down, the day passes, the empty lift goes up, the lights go off. I try to keep thinking, but the more I concentrate, the more confusing it gets. What am I doing? Thinking. Thinking? What's that? Thinking? How does that work? I think about that and my head starts spinning. It gets worse. I imagine myself as being nothing more than 16 years of bone, skin, muscle, brain, blood, meat, and jelly. I imagine symbols inside my head. Electric things. Circuits, tubes, spatial patterns frozen in time. Tiny things. Bits of stuff. Short, jaggedy strings. Carbon. Components. Stuff. I think about it. I think about what that stuff can do. It can move. It can walk. It can breathe. It grows. It can see. It can hear, feel, smell, taste. It can like and hate. It can want. It needs. It can fear. It can speak. It can laugh. It can sleep. It can play. It can wander. It can tell lies. It can remember. It can live without doubts and uncertainties. It can sing. La la. It can dance. It can dream. It bleeds. It coughs. It blinks. It shivers and sweats. It can live without love. It's complicated. It can... Analyze, coordinate, destroy, dream, secrete, control, generate, degenerate, synthesize, emote, regulate, calculate, imagine. It can run, play, jump, judge. It can catch a ball and dance and fight and cry. It can know at night that the morning will come. It can spit, recognize, ride a bike. It can kill, whistle, ask, and forget. It can hope and hurt. It can come to know that there's nothing to know. And it can, and it will, close my eyes. Tuesday, March 6th. I'm feeling better now. We've still got no food, and it's still very cold. But I seem to have found some energy from somewhere, and I've managed to shake off the worst of the gloom. I don't feel quite so desperate anymore. I'm not sure what happened to me over the last few days. I lost myself, I think. I sank down into a hole for a while. They're tricky things, holes. You don't know you're in one until you get out. This morning, I killed and ate a couple of cockroaches. Big ones. They were in the kitchen, behind the burned-out cooker. I was just poking around down there, having a look. You never know what you're going to find down the back of a cooker, do you? The cockroaches were on the wall. I grabbed them fast, squished them up, stuck the goo in a cup, mixed in a bit of cooking oil, and swallowed the lot. It tasted foul. Later, 11.57 p.m., to be precise. We've got a new clock. A few hours ago, the knockout gas came in. I was in my room, sitting on my bed, trying to get some knots out of my hair. I heard the hissing, looked up, and then I smelled the chemicals. I got up and started wrapping a sheet around my head, but it was too late. My eyes started streaming, the stuff got into my lungs, and that was that. When I woke up, I went out and checked on the others. They were all up and about, apart from Bird, who was lying on his bed, gasping like a stranded fish. I haven't seen him for a while, and I didn't realize how bad he's got. He looks terrible. His skin's all streaked and discolored, his head's swollen, his neck's stiff as a board, and his eyes are bulging like mad. It was a really shocking sight. Too much to cope with. I left his room and went to join the others. We had a good look around to see if he'd come down and done anything while we were all knocked out. But the only thing we could find was the clock. A brand new clock. Exactly the same as the old clock. Just for a moment, I had an irresistible urge to smash it. That was about it. We all hung around for a bit, trying to think of something to say. But no one could think of anything. New clock? Big deal. You can't eat it, can you? After a while, the silence got too much and everyone started drifting back to their rooms. I followed Russell and caught up with him at his door. Can I have a word with you? I said. He looked at me with distant eyes. About Bird, I said. Who? Bird. I think he's really ill. Russell just nodded. I said, have you seen him recently? Who? 
bird. Russell blinked. I'm sorry. I'm very tired. Can we talk about this some other time? But I think he's... There's nothing you can do about it. He's dying. We're all dying. Might as well just get used to it. Then he turned and shut the door on me. It's five minutes before lights out. I wonder if they're going to be five long minutes or five short minutes. I wonder how he adjusts the time. Does he do it manually? Is it automated? Computerized? Has he got the clock linked up to some other time-adjusting mechanism? Something he downloaded from the internet or bought at one of those gadget places on Tottenham Court Road? And another thing I wonder. I wonder if he read my notebook when he came down here. Did you? Hey, mister, did you read this when you came down here? Did you take a peek at my innermost thoughts? Did you? No, I don't think you did. In fact, I know you didn't. You see, I'm pretty sneaky. I can tell if this notebook's been moved. I can tell if it's even been touched. You want to know how? Well, tough. I'm not telling you. Mind you, I don't need to be that sneaky when it comes to you. I would have known anyway. If you touched this notebook, I would have smelled it a mile away. Pages would have reeked of shit.